Greetings. So in this video, I'm going to talk about volumes of pyramids and cones. And if you saw the video on volume of prisms and cylinders, this one goes a lot smoother. So go check that out. Anyway, the main idea that I had from that video was that uh, in order to find the volume of something, what you're really doing is finding the area, the base part here, the bottom part, and then just kind of finding it again and again and again until they build up on top of each other until you get like that whole water feel to it. So the volume would just be filling at the bottom and then you fill it up again and again and again and again. So we say it's the the volume is the area of that base, big B, times the height. Because the height will tell you how many times you have to put it on top of each other. Now with a pyramid and a cone there is one little hitch into the whole works which is that it doesn't have the same shape, I guess, on the top or the bottom. So what you're really doing is something like this. And, you know, kid yourself into believing. In fact, even I can't kid myself. Sometimes I can kid myself into believing that the lines I can draw are straight. And sometimes I just give up. And this is one of those times. So I have one there. I have one there. I should have done those in different colors, but what are you going to do? Anyway, the thing that you need to get out of this is that it's going to that point, but it's right in the center here, so it's the same height. But if I fill all this in, the amount of volume when I take out this shape is the same for each of these three sets. They're just organized differently about the shape. So really, the volume of the uh, pyramid or cone prepare you know as opposed to the cylinder or prism so I guess prisms and pyramids go together and then cylinders and cones go together is one out of three so we say if you have that point at the top you just take the same formula big base times height multiply by one-third and I think I have a video somewhere that shows me uh, proving this quote-unquote with liquid so check around the site or I'll have it posted if you're in one of the classes I'm working on. So there you go. That's it. It's the same exact formula as volume of a prism or volume of a cylinder except you multiply by one-third because it's not the exact same overall height. So I'm gonna get some of this stuff out of the way. Clear that out so we can get to work. Now I'm gonna put this times one-third over here because I don't want to erase this and I'm lazy. Oh, So the parts I need to find, okay so what's my Air, what shape is makes my big base? Well, I mean, it's obvious here. That is the bonus feature. Big B is really the area of this rectangle. Length times width, 8 times 6. I'm sure everyone's so confused about where that came from. Not really, obviously, you know, at this point. So 48. And then it's nine tall. So now I have all the parts that I need. 48 times nine times one third. Or you can just do 48 times three if you want. 144. And remember that volume is, I should have said this is in centimeters squared. And this is in centimeters. It is a three dimensional measurement. So 144 centimeters squared. Let's test it. Yeah, that's good. Now, that looks the same. I'm bored with that. All right, let's do a more interesting shape. So here we have a little bit of a different setup. It's got a hexagon on the bottom, all six sides of glory. But it's still the same stuff. It's got a pointy top, so it's only one-third big base times height. So my big base here is the area of that six side figure. It's a regular polygon, so I get absolute times perimeter. Sometimes it doesn't work out nice um, when you try to do the area because they don't give you enough information. Like in this case, they give you a side length and they give you the apothem of the shape. They may not give you that. You may have to find apothem using. Uh, finding area given a side length or given a perimeter or whatever. I have videos on those two. If you need to find them, just type in area of a regular polygon given whatever you're given. You might have to use it. 
they may not give you this height either, then they give you a, si a slant height, in which case you'd have to use uh, the fact that it's a triangle and either trigonometry or Pythagorean theorem. None of these will do that. I'm just trying to focus on one thing, but more advanced stuff does lead to more uh, bringing together of all those things. So the apothem part is given to you. It's 5.2 miles. And then your perimeter is just 6 times 6, because there's 6 sides. So don't do some weirdness where you forget to multiply by 6 and you just write 6 there. That's a pretty common mistake because the number is there and you see it. So in your head, you're thinking like, well, I'm good. 93.6 miles squared. That's a pretty big thing. I mean, you know, they may hide weapons in here. We're not going to think about that, though. And then we're going to multiply by height. The height of the figure which is 12. There's an arrow pointing to it. That's usually how I live my life. I need things pointing, arrows pointing to everything. So multiply by one-third. If you can make it one-third as your multiplier, like it's easier just to do 12 times one-third, which is four, and then multiply by this as opposed to typing in that whole zero point lots of threes, because sometimes it doesn't give you as accurate of an answer as it could. but. If it's not super far off, you're probably okay. 374.4 miles squared. So there's the answer. See? I'm not totally clueless. Uh, maybe one more. Right, so here's one I want to do. I'm going to slide that over just a little bit. Um, the key here for me, like why would I choose this problem? I'm choosing it because it's the problem that has a description instead of a picture. For some reason, uh, I think some students get into, not you, whoever is watching this, obviously this is for other students, those other students who don't listen, um, get to this type of problem and then never draw any pictures or write anything down. or It's like they just have to do it in their head or they get freaked out. When you're in school and you're bored, you make little doodles on your notebook or whatever or, you know, if a kid has to sit and wait somewhere, like a doctor's office, you know, you may see the kid's mom or grandmother or father or uncle or whoever's with them, give them a little pad of paper, and then they just draw pictures. Don't take that joy away from yourself because you're in a math class. Use it to your advantage. So I'm going to use uh, the strategy of drawing a picture. Not a good one. This is going to be a cone, so this is kind of difficult to me to draw obviously. It helps them. It doesn't help that I'm terrible at drawing things. So maybe this will take away your fear. Like if this loser can draw this, at least I can draw them better. So I've got my cone here. And it tells me that I have a radius, which is very convenient, of three. I don't know why I put an R there. I should have put a three there. In fact, I'll remedy that right now and then it has a height. Now the height in this case would be all the way down. It's not this height. This is a slant height. So make sure you're given the right stuff. If you're given a slant height, you'll have to figure out a way to sort of make a triangle here and solve and all that stuff. But in this case you're not you're given the height. So my formula is still the same. One-third big base times height. Big one-third because of the pointy end. Now the big base here of course would be the area of that circle. area of a circle is pi r squared. So there you go. And uh, if you need to leave it in terms of pi, you'll see that in notation a lot. Uh, you just put one third here and this would be nine pi um, miles squared. Um, you would put 9 pi right here, miles squared, and then you put the height. Uh, but in this question, it's not asking for in terms of pi. It just wants to know what the volume is in the original question. That's what it's asking about. So 9 times pi is 28.3-ish.
and then the height they gave me was seven, so seven miles. Sixty six point oh, something around in that general area, and then it's miles to the third power, because volume is a well, I put an A there. Ridiculous. Volume. So uh, if I had left this open for comments, I don't think they do that anymore. Not because I don't like comments, it's just that I, I never respond to them. I just feel bad. It's a guilt thing. So all my stuff, like I clicked a button and it's all gone and I don't really feel like getting it back because I think I'm pretty much done with this. So really my bigger point is don't take away the idea of being able to draw a little bit. Even if you're drawing abilities are terrible, mine are, but it doesn't keep me from being able to get the correct answer because I know if I put a little bit out there I can see kind of what's going on and that's what the most important part is. Anyway, hopefully this was helpful. Volume of cones and pyramids, just remember that anytime you have that little pointy end and you're trying to find volume, you want to find the area, that base, whatever it happens to be, and then multiply by the height, and then it's one-third because you have three of these cones or pyramids that could fit inside of the same matching size cylinder or prism respectively. But that's it.